Hello and welcome to the brake section of this build. In this part I will be fully overhauling the brakes front to back. However, this is the part where I have lost a good chunk of the videos. And for your viewing pleasure, I took the calipers apart to some extent so I can show you the rebuild process. Now this is how the story goes. The front calipers were loaded with rust. This tended to lock up the pistons when pushed out, which in turn they did not retract. So that led to burnout and glaze the front discs due to the constant friction. The pistons had grooves in them due to getting stuck to the rust, so the pistons, bolts, all of the rubber pieces and the hardware set have been replaced. Since the rebuild video was lost, another one was remade. This time I did not split apart the rear calipers because I could not find the flat washer seals. So I managed to find me a similar sized set and modified them to fit, which ended up costing me a lot of time and money. So these new pistons are not the original ones but I have fitted ones which were similarly sized in length and external diameter. I can't guarantee the result because this is still experimental. However, the cheap alternative would have been to take the original ones to an engineering shop and fabricate four pistons out of a stainless steel rod. But I was pressed for time, so I just have had these fitted. Although if I owned my own lathe, it would have been a very easy task for me to do since I'm knowledgeable in the machining sector. Also, the bolts, pads and hardware set have been replaced.
When tackling the parking brake assembly, the biggest issue I faced was that the brake never really worked. Upon investigation it seemed that previously the wheel bearing seals have failed and oil has dripped on the inner side of the disc. And this led to covering the brake shoes with oil. So after I'm done with this rebuild, the parking brake should work for the first time in a long time. Now the parts that make up this parking brake consist of the brake shoes, the shoe retainer along with its tensioning springs, the lower block holding the shoe and in this case it holds the brake cable in place. These are the pivoting pins that hold the linkage mechanism in place. And finally, the one item that has become super rare, which I have managed to source out from two different companies, is the brake adjuster. Also, for those wondering how this works, here's how the shoe is positioned from inside. Here you can clearly see that the discs have turned blue due to being overheated because the caliper pistons were being pushed out and failing to retract. Now the reason why the calipers ceased for the most part revolved around the fact that the dust covers were torn and in time water settled around the piston whenever the car was stationary. This in turn rusted and locked the piston from moving, up to the point that the rear calipers did not function at all. All these issues warped the front discs as a result. However, the rear discs barely had any external damage since the calipers never really worked, ever since the car was bought. But the inner side was scratched due to dislodged brake shoes, which caused havoc inside the discs. So to resurface the discs, I went looking for my mentor, who taught me everything about machining. However, he wanted to do the discs himself, since he doesn't like people using his machines. Which is understandable. Also, here you can see the discs were centered and faced as little as possible in order not to eat away a lot of the material. Even though some material was taken off, these discs were replaced some time ago, and they only have around 4000 miles on them. So no need to worry, there is still a lot of material left, and they are still above the disc's safe limit. What is being done here is the centering of the brake disc, by means of a dial gauge indicator. When the dial gauge reads zero at the inner face of the disc and the needle does not flicker, it means that the disc's faces are balanced perpendicularly to the lathe stooling.
the front wheel assembly was connected to the shock absorber. But before it was tightened, a rear bracket spacer was to be placed in between, otherwise the shock absorber's internal seals would have been ruined due to the metal being squashed.